all I hear, go get the money. So I go get it. Hate means I do something right. So I'ma let them. Yeah, I'ma let them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'ma let them. I hit the nail on the head. Yeah, yeah, I'ma let them. All I hear, go get the money. So at this point, Dylan Dennis has obviously become, a, let's say, media sensation, or for want of a better word. He's a prevalent character amongst the MMA tropes. Do you know much about him prior to Conor McGregor? I remember him grappling either Gary Tonin or someone like that, and he lost. And then there was a whole thing where Bellator signed him. I don't think Bellator would have promoted Dylan Dennis in any way if it wasn't for his. Well, maybe not. If I mean, if he does have all these like amazing jujitsu accomplishments, yeah, then maybe he would have snuck into Bellator and maybe they would have seen something in him. Didn't he have like two fights in 2018 or something? Yeah, but like his striking was never there. No, ever. I remember him being very uh, cautious on the feet. Chin was very high. Not great boxing defense. And then ultimately he won both the fights on the ground, right? Yeah. I think he won his debut with like a toe hold. Well, I mean, like, first of all, it doesn't look terrible there. Little hopping sidekick's not really doing much, but range management's okay. It just it's more about the reaction. He's already shot us. Take that. It's more about the reaction to how he gets hit, really, I'd say. And uh, how he, he handles that. Because that's all great distance management. His opponent's pretty open as well. I mean, didn't really move his head. Got off to the side there. And immediately, I mean, you got you like his level changes are really good. Yeah, his takedowns are really good. So to, a toe hold and an armbar, and virtually no examples of his striking at all. A ring rusted, five years older Dylan Dennis, who's fighting in a sport he's never has against a guy who had probably a fair amount of boxing experience, who is like a lot a, younger than a him. lot younger, crazy athlete as well. He's just really open. Yeah. And the, like the all, all the shots are pulled really short. So this is a few he's not, turning not turning over his punches. He's either. not turning over his punches, not turning just. over his shoulder. He's not turning over his feet or his hips. And he's working out in an apartment with no furniture. <laughs> What's going on there? Well he's had to sell everything. <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly. the, uh... I don't know if his technique is necessarily any better or worse than Logan's though, to to be honest. I think Logan's just gonna have the age and the size and the power. And probably he'll be faster than him, but it's whether he can continue that out. But to be fair to guys like KSI and Logan Paul, they have they they've gone to world class gyms, right? They are training with world class athletes. And to say, oh, just because I'm fucking former Jiu Jitsu world champion, I can go in and compete with a guy who's been training in the gym every day for the last five years in boxing. Imagine being a Jiu Jitsu guy though, and being like pretending you're like one of the Diaz brothers. <laughs> True. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's not like I mean jujitsu is cool, but it's not fuck it. It's not like a knife fight, how, is it? <laughs> how has he? How has he actually stayed relevant this whole time? It's actually kind of impressive. It is, it is actually incredibly <laughs> well, no, he, impressive. He, done he does these um he does these really cool competitions where if you like and you retweet, you can win a thousand pounds. That's pretty good. That's like, I, I love a thousand pounds. Like the biggest achievement he did, I guess, was when he was in Connor's camp for Habib, and it's like, oh, Connor's training with Dylan Dennis, and then he got ragdolled anyway. It's like Dylan Dennis's biggest accomplishment ever was Habib Nurmagomedov jumping on him. That's his most and probably he biggest off accomplishment. Habib's much he jumped out of the cage at him. that's an accomplishment you've embedded yourself in history whenever anyone talks about mcgregor versus habib no magomedov you're not going to talk about it without the brawl that happened post fight and so he's just miraculously just stayed relevant because of that even now when mcgregor is dwindling and calling out ksi and generally looking like an old man who's been at the pub for 16 straight hours <laughs> dylan dennis is still there it's interesting because obviously when we have these conversations, we talk about like not just like the MMA community, but everyone outside of the MMA community who are big fans of influencer boxing, who are big fans of KSI, who are big fans of Logan Paul, and they see these guys are boxing these guys. What does Dylan Dennis actually mean to the world of MMA? Yeah, I don't think anyone claims Dylan as their guy. But let's think, who's on Dylan's side? I remember him pre pandemic getting toilet paper thrown at him when he was oh, by with, Jake. with Brendan Sharp. He's done nothing between that point and now. So that's the thing, the awkward thing about him though, specifically, and the reason why he's in this scenario right now is because Jake Paul identified him along with Ben Askren as someone who can't actually strike. Yeah, that's yeah. true, yeah. And that, that narrative, because the guy just hasn't fought, he hasn't been knocked out by one of the pools yet. It's just stayed. And I think this is the thing, if Logan does KO him or beat him. Is that the end of the Dennis train? Are people just going to be like, you're irrelevant now. You finally got beaten by it's, one of the Pool brothers. No one's 
watching all his stuff because they believe he's an amazing fighter. It's just like, what is this guy going to say next? He's a good troll. He's like a bad Chael Sonnen though. He just makes shit up. When he went on the MMA hour, yeah, he was just making stuff up. Beef that's happened up. Messages like it will send people and be like, and then everyone will be like, oh, okay, show me. Show me the messages now. It's like, oh, I've got to change my phone. We love a good feud. We love a good shit talk. We love some personal beef. And the fact that Dylan Dennis is reigning kind of supreme in that realm, as opposed to what we have currently going on. We have fucking Tom Aspinall just like, well, I'm not going to create beef for, for no reason. And you're just like, fuck off, Tom. <laughs> Challenge John Jones. I know we want the drama in MMA, but does it not make more sense to be that level of shit talk? Talk in that medium because like misfits is all about influencers coming together settling beef fighting just because they're kind of and just creating clout for themselves yeah well, so it's it? like it kind of makes sense to have such a hyped level with all the fucking props and the jokes that you bring to your press conference like bringing a cake of dylan knocked out or a picture of him getting strangled by the bouncer all that i would love to see some of that in mma but I feel like the medium of influ influencer boxing is like, it's so much better for that. But like what influencer boxing is, is essentially just a replication of what Connor and Floyd did when they went on their world tour. They had basically watched what, what Floyd and Connor did and they, and they saw value in that and they were like, right, let's do that. And then all of this shit that you see when they go mental in the press conferences and stuff, I honestly think it's that's what they think they should be doing because they've seen Connor do it. If you're creating a circus, who's one of the biggest jesters that you can bring into that circus? It's absolutely Dennis, isn't it? I think there's also an attraction with Dylan because he already was scheduled to fight KSI and then pulled out because he wasn't prepared enough. So it's kind of like this game where it's like, will Dylan fight this time? He's like, he talks so much shit, he's called everyone out on Twitter. That will he finally fight people? It's just like they're bullying him to fight yeah. at this point. And he's just like, guys, I'm a fucking jiu-jitsu guy. Wait, Perry did a face off yeah, with so, Logan Paul. Yeah, Mike so Perry's been the backup fighter for he's this He's the backup fight. fighter. Yeah. Mike Perry's the backup fighter. That's a worse fight for Logan Paul. 100%. Like, Mike Perry will fuck the, him why up. Is the, 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 the backup fighter is like the guy that could... Because Mike Perry is about to take over this game. He beat, he beat fucking MVP Mike Perry will in a beat boxing match. In a bed, all of yeah. them. I read that they put a clause in where he cannot dro drop out. And if he yeah. does drop out, he's got a 100k fine. But at the end of the day, is this guy going to make 100k plus in just doing shit like this to then go, fuck it. I've made 600, 700k from the build up, from the sponsorships, from all this talk all this shit i don't need to turn up to the fight he's like fuck it you can have the 100k i won't turn up and then mike perry jumps in see that's far more interesting is it not yeah mike perry versus logan paul yeah i mean the guy won't turn up the guy won't turn up and actually if he's gonna make a shitload of money doing all this silly bullshit fair play to the guy and then ride off into the sunset what are you sipping down here in your your party cup <laughs> What have you got in the party? Cup? Well, considering our sponsor for this podcast is Howl Ahead. It's yeah. always Howl Ahead. As always, every week, we wanted to give a shout out to our sponsor, Howl Ahead. Thank you very much, guys. Appreciate you. If you guys want to get your hands on Howl Ahead, it's in the UK now, as we tell you every week. Larger Tesco's, Amazon, Master at Malt. Go pick yourself up a bottle. Thanks, Howl Ahead. The channel members really starting to kick off, I think. It's, it's going off. to really actually have a bit of a community. Because at the start, we didn't really, did we? No. We had like a few people join. It was me. Yeah, it was. It was me. <laughs> It's Luke. And I'm on the show. But now it's actually seemed to work. You know, people are actually starting to really enjoy the long form content, I think, and really getting involved. I think I think someone something we've not mentioned the past couple of weeks is like how much it actually helps us. Like people getting involved with this podcast has done wonders for the channel. I feel appreciated. And that's all you really crave at the end. Yeah, of the validation day, yeah. from others. No. <laughs> If you join us as a channel member, you can join on any tier. You can join the bottom tier, Just Bleed, and you get two unedited podcasts, generally about 30 minutes, 35 minutes. But also, if you join as a channel champion or a Hall of Famer, a man over here. Yeah, you get access to the Rise meeting as well as everything else.